this photo was taken five months ago. That's me in the middle. I'm surrounded by some of the most talented and creative women that I've come to know working on the project Amplify Her. These women are music producers, illustrators, animators, photographers, and videographers. This is one of the most accomplished moments in my career. Today, I'm excited to tell you the story about how I got here. It's a story about the next rise of the feminine, and it's deeply personal. In order for me to tell you this story, I need to introduce you to this guy, Ian McKenzie. In 2013, Ian and I had just finished wrapping up our work on the feature documentary film, Occupy Love, when Ian turned to me and asked me if I would produce his next film. Now, Ian's career was rising, so the topic, it had to be important. So he turned to me and said, yeah, it's about women in the electronic music scene. From a global movement like Occupy to a film about girl DJs, really? In the tech industry, I had to put my pantsuit on every day and work to be the powerful woman in a room. If I could do it, why couldn't they? The last thing I thought I would want to do was go around and ask a bunch of girl DJs deep personal questions about themselves, or the lack of women in the scene, or any scene for that matter. I was the furthest away from identifying myself to a feminist as I possibly could be. But then Ian said, in his wisest Ian tone, that's not the question I'm asking, Nicole. I want to know, what unique gift does the feminine expression have to offer our culture? What unique gift? I had no idea what he was talking about. And to be honest, I was a little embarrassed. What did Ian know about being a woman that I didn't? <laughs> And then, because Ian knows me so well, he said, Nicole, you can direct the transmedia. Now, transmedia storytelling is one of my favorite things to do. It's when you take a character or a theme from one platform, like a film, and you transport characters or themes over to another platform, like a game or a mobile app. In documentary filmmaking, this is what creates impact. Building out your message to have multiple touch points to hit different audiences. It's also called story world building. So, Ian had me with a big, juicy transmedia carrot. A carrot that would lead me to one of my deep personal wounds. A wound that I had clearly been avoiding, but was affecting every realm of my life. Growing up as a girl can be really painful sometimes. I remember in junior high school, there was this alleyway where all the cool kids would hang out. One day, I decided to go meet my best friend there. Something was different. As I walked up to her, she had a cigarette in her hand. She took the cigarette and blew smoke in my face. All the girls around laughing, spitting at me and calling me names. This moment was significant because we had made a friendship pact earlier this year that we would never smoke. We had been painfully watching her father die of lung cancer. This was the first moment of weeks and weeks of girls harassing me. Girls I had known my entire life. It was a game of girl roulette, and I was the girl of the week. It happened to most of us as we got picked off one by one. This is one of the first scars that hardened me to my relationships with women. I changed schools, but the girls were still the same. So I did what anyone would do. I quit girl relationships. In university, my life was the same. I had many male friends and few female ones. There was a running joke amongst my guy friends who would introduce me to their girlfriends like this. And this is Nicole, the girl you'll soon hate. <laughs> In a crowd full of men, I could be myself. I was witty, easygoing, happy. But put one more woman in the room, and whew, everything was different. I would rarely say a word. Not because I didn't want to, because, but because the room now contained a climate of competition. And I was part of that, whether I liked it or not. In my last year of university, I started my first tech company with my three male roommates. 
Fast forward four more years, and I'm on a bus traveling down to the Silicon Valley full of tech entrepreneurs. And you guessed it, I'm the only woman on it. I have spent most of my personal and professional career as the sole woman amongst many men. Women are in constant competition with each other. It starts early off in childhood and continues into adulthood. We compete for the title of Queen Bee, for the job or for the coveted position amongst men. We compete for value, importance, and power. It's something infectious, and it's ingrained in our society. And it's something we need to unlearn. For two years, Ian and I would travel all over North America interviewing all sorts of women. But what I wasn't expecting was that most of the women would have the same problem with the question around the lack of women that I did. They found it polarizing. It perpetuates the problem. It was intimidating rather than encouraging. As we dug deeper, I also noticed that there were similar scars to my own. In the summer of 2014, I met a producer named Blontron. Now, Blontron was loud and sexual and kind of gross sometimes. She wore pizza bikinis, she celebrates Merkin Mondays, and she dances like her vagina's on fire. <laughs> the first time I saw her perform, she was twerking on top of DJ Booth the crowd shaking everything they could. I didn't get it. Why did she have to do all of that to get attention? In that moment, I judged her. I judged her without being a part of the experience that she was creating. I judged her the same way women had judged me my entire life. I judged her knowingly, harshly, and unjustifiably. The next day, I had the opportunity to interview her. And what I wasn't expecting was that she was going to completely blow my mind. I can still watch that interview over and over, uncut. And for a documentary filmmaker, that's saying a lot. As Blontron, she could be the sexually charged part of herself. She was comfortable in her own skin. She had fun on stage. By being authentic, she created a safe container where other people could also express their more sexual sides. Sides that are normally locked up for fear of being judged. Now, as women, we often feel judged around our sexuality. But it doesn't stop there. In our quest for equality, we might have lost a part of ourselves along the way. In our pursuit for success, we look to mirror ourselves after those who were standing in the positions that we wanted. We put our pantsuits on and took on a masculine way of being. And that's okay, but it's not the only way of being. It undervalues the feminine, the relationships between actions and people. Now, the, today, the feminine is extremely undervalued in this dominant masculine culture. It's a symptom of an unbalanced society. Blontron really taught me how to feel safe and create that safe space for people to be able to express themselves without feeling judged. Imagine what we could do as women if we felt free and safe to express ourselves. Amplify Her was starting to unpack a lot for me. I was learning all about unique feminine expression. For me, that translated right into the boardroom. At work, along with my male coworkers, we'd always try and solve problems from point A to point B. Problem, solution. But my brain doesn't really work like that. And so I used to run away into the closet and puzzle piece everything together. I always got to the end and came up with a solution, but my journey was a little bit different. It's something that I thought was weak and I used to hide it. But now this project has taught me that that's really something to be proud of. And I've actually incorporated it into the business world, and our business is more successful because of it. And it's probably why I like to build story worlds, really puzzle piecing everything together, moving across platforms. So as the film started to wrap up, it was time for my favorite part, the story world building. 
my team decided that we were going to take six of the music producers and transport them into a comic book to take their natural avatar-like personalities, uncover a wound, turn it into a strength, you know, like superheroines. Really create characters that we could really mirror ourselves after. And who better to tell the stories? Women. So we would pair them with six comic book illustrators. So now my brain was buzzing with creativity, and I was getting really excited. But there was still a problem. Comic books don't have music. And part of the unique feminine expression that these women really had to offer came through in their music. So we added six more women, animators. Animators that could take the comic books once they were drawn and animate them into video motion comics. And then the music producers could come in and score them underneath. OK, so let's do some math here. We got six music producers. Six, and we added one more, so seven comic book writer illustrators and six animators. Was I crazy? Was I going to be able to handle 19 women? <laughs> In order for this project to really get the importance that we wanted it to have, we knew that we needed to blanch on it. We needed to create that safe place for people to really dig deep. And that's exactly what we did. In June of 2015, we went to a remote island in the Pacific Northwest, and women from all over North America joined together to tell stories of transformation. I still remember the first time I stood in front of all the women that came out to the retreat. I wasn't sure who was more awkward, me or them. One of the things that I was learning was that collaboration with other women in their lives was just as rare as it was in mine. So the process of really collaborating with each other was almost more important than the end product. But the end product? It's shaping up to be pretty cool. <laughs> Every day was planned with a purpose. We discarded old feminine tropes. We uncovered wounds. We built stories of transformation, and we envisioned new characters. Through collaboration, Women really explored their unique gifts in deep community with each other. And instead of being defined by those around them, they define themselves. OK, let's watch a video clip. This is a behind the scenes clip of the making of the graphic novel. At first, I thought it was a comic, which it kind of is. I was like, cool, somebody's going to draw me. Then Nicole started talking about a animating it, and then I thought it was a cartoon, which it is, but it's not. It's both of the things. I feel like the violin is my voice. I always thought a woman's voice should be heard. It's not screaming and shouting feminism. It's taking it from a different angle. It's pretty unusual to be asked to come up with a really kick-ass story that you're really happy with in collaboration with people you've never met before. As I've been opening up to collaboration with the team, it's just been this really powerful coming together of emotional resonance and then creating story from there. What's been really different is removing the aspect of competition. Usually when I am around a lot of women, there tends to be a lot of drama and ego involved. We talked a lot about sisterhood, not being in competition with other women in your field, other women in general, but being an ally. And we're all here to lean on each other and to learn. And so what happens is so much more beautiful and genuine. People can only see one part. Why isn't that just so obvious to everyone that everyone is all of these things, that women are all of these things, that people are so much more than what we just see? What does the true feminine look like if given the chance to express itself. And for us, we thought the answer was everything. It looks like everything. I want to see the hero's journey change to something where we are not erasing what's happened to us. We are not erasing our wounds. Every wounding becomes a part of my story and my strength.
In our quest for equality, we need to rebalance the feminine and the masculine. The feminine traits that we have written off as weak are some of the most important traits that our culture needs in this time. We need to take them out of hiding, dust them off, and put them on like a pizza bikini. <laughs> really own them in ourselves and recognize them in each other. As women, we need to learn to collaborate with each other instead of compete, support each other instead of judge one another. For me, I never would have thought that I would be collaborating with the girl who was twerking on the DJ booth. But when I stepped back and actually saw her, not only did I recognize that she was a brilliant music producer, but also a brilliant businesswoman. And just last week, she asked me, me, <laughs> to be on her board of directors for her newest LA-based company. And that's how we're going to flip the equality question. We're going to lift each other up to those coveted positions that we wanted together. And we're going to do it on our own terms. Because sometimes our biggest wounds become our greatest gifts. And moments like these, they might even change our world. They certainly changed mine. Thank you. <laughs>